Hi, I'm Lucian. I'm with uh, RT, the power transmission system operator in France. I'm also involved in LF Energy uh, as uh, chair of the board. And uh, at RT, my main role is uh, OSPO, Open Source Program Officer. Um, today, I will do the presentation together with Aurelien. So Aurelien, if you want to introduce yourself. So hi, yes, I'm Aurelien. Um, so I'm working with RT as well as a project manager in charge of the, the virtualization of the, the substation uh, control system. So the, the purpose of our presentation today is to talk about um, a recent project that we are launching under LF Energy uh, umbrella and that deals with the virtualization for uh, real-time uh, power substation automation. So before stepping into the topic, a few words about RT. We operate, maintain, and develop the French uh, power transmission network. Uh, there are about uh, um, 5,800 um, people working at RT. Uh, we are not an IT company. Uh, most of our people are doing the same as uh, what is shown in, on the picture, so working uh, on the field. However, two years ago, RT decided to reinforce its internal development capabilities, and we also decided to embrace open source at one pillar of our uh, software development strategy. This is motivated by the context that is changing and uh, we need to adapt to the new context. I'm meaning the context of the energy transition. So we, are, we have to face uh, uh, the growth of uh, renewable energy sources, such as uh, wind generation or photovoltaics. We also have to prepare to new uh, uses that are growing such as electric mobility. And we also expect that there will be uh, more responsiveness uh, from the consumer side to uh, market signals or scarcity signals. So there will be uh, potentially more smart services from a growing number of uh, third parties scattered over the network. So in this context, we have to adapt our grid control architecture with a multiplication of distributed controls. These uh, automation systems will ha have to adapt to more diverse situations and in, in a more dynamic manner. Uh, also, uh, data will play an increasing role. For instance, we are facing an aging infrastructure and in order to optimize better our asset management, we want to rely on uh, more data applying uh, analytics and new technologies such as uh, AI. So um, in this context, we are thinking about a new generation of grid automation systems and basically there are uh, four challenges. The first one relates to innovation. So we have to integrate new functions and technologies uh, most of them are IT technologies in order to, to fulfill the needs of, of the future. Um, time and cost efficiency will be a, a key, um, sorry, will be a, a key challenge as well. Um, this is due to the fact that the new energy sources, uh, renewable energy sources are developing much faster than the conventional uh, coal or, or, or gas uh, power plants that we had in the past. And um, of course, the uh, bill for the end consumer is uh, very important uh, to us. So we want to keep it uh, low. So we have a strong budget constraints. Another challenge will be co cross-industry collaboration. Uh, in an automation system, we uh, want to integrate products from various vendors. Of course, um, there is already, uh, those uh, products rely on uh, standards that which purpose is to ensure interoperability. 
However, um, by experience, we know that standards are not sufficient to ensure plug and play interoperability, which means that there are significant integration costs, interoperability costs, and this is also time consuming. Um, to solve this, one way is to specify our own interpretation of the standards, but this is not a solution either because if each customer does the same, then the vendor is confronted to uh, value specifications. They need to adapt their products and that is not uh, efficient. And the last challenge is the scalability and flexibility. So uh, on our grid in the future, there will be uh, more diverse situations between areas, for instance, where there is a lot of renewable or wind energy de developing and other areas where there will be um, electric mobility, for instance. So the solutions will need to, the automation systems will need to adapt to these diverse situations. At the same time, we want to, still want to benefit from a scale effect. So not uh, paying too much costs, investment costs, but also maintenance costs into two uh, specialized systems. So that's what we need, mean by an industrial tailor-made solution. To meet these four challenges, we have identified um, three mainstays. The first one uh, is to, to build a modular and interoperable architecture based on standards. The relevant standard in our case is IEC 61850. But as I said, this is not sufficient. So um, now we are turning to open source and virtualization, also inspired by the experience and the lessons learned from other industries, such as the telecommunication industry who moved um, that moved to um, virtualization and open source um, some years ago, already some years ago. So this context led us to the CPAS project. Uh, CPAS stands for Software Enabled Automation Platform and Artifacts. It, it's a very recent project of LF Energy. Uh, Maybe to start with a, a bit of history of this project, um, we, um, we started the Q3 in 2019 with a call for collaboration under LF Energy umbrella. And after this call for collaboration made by RT, it was decided to form a, a design team. The scope, the, the aim of this design team was to um, build a common roadmap for an open source project. Uh, and um, several customers and technology vendors uh, joined this design team uh, with the principle that there was no commitment to participate to the future project, but only to spend some time to, to think about what could be a, a joint roadmap based on each party's uh, vision and, and needs. So this design team worked between um, January and June 2020, uh, and it delivered the initial roadmap of an open source project. Um, this work is uh, um, involved, uh, as I mentioned, um, both end users and technology vendors. So Advantech, Aliander, GE, National Grid, RT, Schneider Electric, uh, participated to these works and the um, resulting uh, roadmap uh, has been uh, this, uh, released under a Creative Commons attribution license. Further to these works, the design team stopped and uh, some parties decided to continue with an open source project and it was submitted to LF Energy for approval. So, um, I'm pleased to uh, inform you that last week, LF Energy's board approved the launch of the CPAS project at incubation stage. So the, the mission of the CPAS project is to develop um, um, re reference design and industry 
trial grade platform, open source platform, um, that will have to run real time virtualized automation and protection applications. Um, by protection applications, uh, we mean applications that are intended to uh, protect uh, the, the grid, the assets, but also the people in case of incidents, such as uh, short circuits on the grid, or for instance, uh, lightning striking power lines, etc. So these are applications that have strong uh, um, time constraints. Um, by reference design, we, we mean having a platform uh, that can be used by various technology vendors um, to build their applications, their automation applications, and uh, check the fulfillment of requirements, check the interoperability, etc. Et um, by industrial grade, we, we, we intend to have uh, this platform as uh, a, a very good basis uh, for commercial products that will uh, operate on the real uh, power grids. We, the first we use case that we foresee is related to the power grid industry. However, we also see potential applications beyond power grids still related to the power industry, but it could be, for instance, for um, power plant automation systems or, or automation systems on the consumer sides. The project will uh, encompass uh, several activities, um, starting from the specification of the uh, functional and technical requirements to, to be fulfilled by the platform. Uh, specifying also uh, test procedures to, to assess the fulfillment of the requirements. Then building the appropriate system architecture and the aim here is to reuse as much as possible existing technologies from other industries. Of course, there may be the need to, to develop uh, specific functions from uh, for our industry based on our uh, special needs and, um, and then we will also have to define and implement APIs uh, for external applications. As I mentioned, the scope of the project is uh, related to the uh, platform, not the application, not the automation applications. Um, however, we, we want to ease the integration of such applications on the platform. And uh, also, uh, despite the fact that automation applications will not be in the scope of the project, we foresee the need to have some uh, realistic uh, proxies of such applications to, to be able to uh, test the fulfillment of the requirements within the community and to facilitate the identification of uh, improvements. And last but not least, the project will also define uh, guidelines and best practices to help technology vendors to integrate, test, deploy, and maintain uh, systems based on the platform. So I will stop here and leave the floor to Aurelia. Thank you, Luciano. Uh, so now let's uh, move to, to the technical vision and concept that we have. So first I would like to start with uh, the state of the art. So uh, let's take, a, let's deep in, a, in an actual digital substation to see from where we start and then it will be easier to to understand what we what we want to do so what is a digital substation so power grid substation um, 
This is where all the data from the high voltage equipment, such as line, transformer, are collected. This is also the place where you will be able to control those equipments and the place where you have all the, say, the, the intelligence, like uh, protections, uh, to protect those equipments and also people. So the way it is done today is you for each high voltage equipment, such as, a, for example, a transformer or overhead line, you will have a dedicated bay. And in this bay, you will find the SCADA feature to, to control it and to, uh, to, to get uh, data. And also protections and automatons. Then you will have a LAN and a substation level features such as administration, and SCADA, and monitoring. And then all those data are sent to the control room. So it could be a national control room or regional one from where you can monitor the, the grid. So if you see the picture on the, on the right side, you will see that for, so there is several bays and it, and it takes lots of space. Let's focus on bay equipments. So when you are on bay, you have, I would say three types of equipments. The first one is related to SCADA. So in a digital substation, you will get as an input voltage and current uh, with a sample rate around 4k hertz. And then you will convert those uh, measurements at a lower sample rate, like uh, one, one measure every second. And then you will provide those information to the upper level. You will also get like a binary and analog value that will tell you what are the, the states of the, uh, of, the, of the high voltage equipment. For example, you, you will know whether the circuit breaker is open or closed. And the, the operating time that is um, expected from this kind of system when you send a, a, a control, like open the circuit breaker, is from 10 milliseconds to several seconds, depend on the, the situation. Secondly, you have automatons. So automatons, basically, they will take the same kind of input. Uh, and the output is a binary. So like, uh, okay, if I see on a transformer that uh, the load is above this level, I should act this way. And the most critical ones are protections. So as Lucien said before, protection are to protect the equipment and also people. So it's, it's very critical. And those are real-time equipment. It means that, that the operating time should be respected. So as input, you will take a voltage and current that reflect the state of the, of the, the power grid. And as an output, you will decide to trip or to open a cycle breaker to, to, to protect people and equipment. So we've talked about the, the equipment that we'll find. The question now is how do they communicate? So before, Lucien talked about the IC61850. So in the, in the power grid, 61850 is the, the standard that is used for two types of things. The first one is to, it will specify the data model. So the objects and services that make possible to communicate with the, the equipments. And, all, and then you have the, the second part that is about how do I communicate those data? There, there are three ways to do it. The first one is client server. Uh, using uh, MMS over IP. So basically you will use this kind of communication for non-critical um, 
operation. It's what we call report. So you want to get information about uh, an equipment, you, you can use that. Uh, the second one is GOOS. So GOOS message are faster messages that I use, for example, to open a cycle breaker. So if I am a protection and I want to open a cycle breaker, then I will send a GOOS. The, so the sample rate is higher. And the last one is the sample value. Uh, it's the most critical one to handle because those are real-time uh, message. So if you lose one, you, there is no way uh, you can retrieve it later. So sample value are used to to have information about voltage and current. So, so far we have seen how it is today. Uh, now let's talk about uh, the approach that uh, we have in the CPAF project design team, as we aim for a more flexible and cost-effective solution based on a common platform. So what's the idea? So, before we talk about the substation, so basically the idea is to keep only one platform that will host all the features. So instead of having several base, substation level, and so on, you will have one common platform where you can put apps. And those apps are monitoring apps, protection apps, control apps. Since you want to have a high availability, you need redundancy. So you could have one, two, three platform depending on, you know, on the security that you want to have. What is interesting is once you have this platform at this level, you can use it at another level. So for example, for integration, you can build a digital twin more easily that reflect exactly uh, what we have in the substation and can be used to, to perform tests. So it, it will be easier to make integration and, uh, and to deploy. And also you can, sometimes you have functionality in Power Grid that are centralized. For example, uh, uh, automaton that will monitor the, not just one substation, but several substation. And then you can also use the same platform for, the, for, for this. Okay, so let's dip into the, the platform. So what we think about is basically you have uh, in green the application that you want to, to host on the platform um, that can be developed by, uh, by, uh, by um, uh, vendors or industrial or university and so on. What is interesting is you could share common services on this platform, like uh, how will I deploy my functionality? Uh, so administration, uh, you can uh, share services like, like 61850, uh, if you don't have a, a 61850 stack in your application, uh, it will take charge of the redundancy, uh, network administration and so on. And now let's talk about the, the, the hardware. So the idea is to use uh, non-specific hardware, uh, like uh, classical x86 architecture. The only thing that need to, that is very important, is to have a network card, so NIC, uh, that is compliant with DPDK. Why is that? because we realized that if we wanted to be able to perform um, a good performance with the network uh, services that are provided by the 61850, uh, there is lots of data and you want to have low latency to, to ensure that the protection will, uh, will uh, we have a good behavior. So you need to have direct access to the network card and that's why we use uh, DPDK. So now let's take a look at the operating system. Uh, so it's a critical system. So you want to 
you want the system to be as small as as possible and uh, we found that uh, using yocto to build it was a good way uh, to ensure uh, a minimal surface of uh, attack so we use yocto uh, kvm as an hypervisor for the network as a, as i said before um, DPDK is important if we want to achieve the, the performance needed. And we use it with OVS, so OVS DPDK. And since uh, we have real-time application like protection, um, we need to have a real-time behavior. So that's why we use uh, Linux, but with the patch preamp RT. And for the high availability, and uh, redundancy, we use a pacemaker, uh, call sync and Ceph. So what we've done so far is a proof of concept to see whether the, the, the technological uh, choice that we've made were a good uh, fit with, uh, with our needs. So the first thing we wanted to check is whether uh, in this kind of architecture with this kind of operating system was good enough to, uh, to for the real-time application that we have. So, and we wanted to compare the, this with a, a system without a, a, a real-time patch. So, uh, if we talk about the hardware that we took, we, we have a 14 core uh, Xeon system with 32 gigabytes. So on the right, uh, we use a, a cyclic test with a non uh, preempted system. And we see that the maximum latent, latency that we, we have on the host is 500 microseconds. Uh, before we talk about voltage and current acquisition, and we say that the, the sample rate was around 4 kHz. So it's one value every 250 microseconds. So if we compare this uh, number with the 500 microseconds, we can directly say that, that it's not enough. So what about the same um, case, but with a preempted uh, system. With a preempted system, we achieve a 21 microsecond latency. That is compliant for the host uh, and our application. But what we tested so far is the host. And as I told you before, what we want to do is to be able to to have a third party application on the platform. So that can be in a virtual machine. So basically what we've done is the same test, but in the guest. So we have the host that I presented uh, just now. And on top of that, we put a virtual machine with, uh, without KVM, of course, OVS and DPDK because it's not needed in the guest. And uh, the guest is also built with uh, Yocto and the kernel is uh, preempted uh, with the patch preempt RT. And we see that we achieve a latency within the, the guest of 149 microseconds. So it's still compatible, still compliant with our case. So next, uh, for the proof of concept, we, we decided to to test uh, the architecture, the redundancy. So, as I told you before, we, we check the first the latency uh, of the host, and now what we wanted to do is to see whether uh, uh, we were able to to ensure the right level of uh, redundancy. So we build a, a cluster of uh, of three hosts. So the three hosts have, have the same uh, the same uh, distribution Linux distribution based on Yocto and uh, Preamp 30 and 
uh, OVS, uh, DPDK, and so on. So two of them, of them were, were used to host a virtual machine. And the third one, the observer that you see, it just used to have the quorum in the, in the cluster. Uh, on top of that, uh, what we wanted to do is to, for the, the digital substation, the, the digital substation don't want to see the, 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 uh, the IP address, don't want to, to give an IP address for each uh, virtual machine, the active one and the passive one. So we use CoreSync to have virtual IP and to expose only the IP of the virtual machine that is active and that will remain the same. Secondly, we also have a distributed storage based on Ceph uh, to ensure that uh, in case of failure of either the virtual machine or the host, uh, we can still uh, uh, move to the passive one without losing data. So what we've done in this case is, is very simple. Until now, it's just like we shut down one host, see whether the, the, the shift to the other host is okay. And also uh, if we shut down one uh, virtual machine, uh, is, uh, how long does it take to, to switch to the other one? And now it's, uh, it's okay for us. So, okay, so now we've seen that uh, for the proof of concept, uh, we've checked that uh, the, the real-time performance were compliant with what we, we need. We also checked that the, the architecture we, we foresee uh, is a good guess. It needs, of course, to be, uh, to be precise, but the, the different uh, components are, seems to be okay. But something is missing. Uh, as you, as you, as Lucian said before, we, how are you going to test uh, the different applications that are hosted uh, uh, in the in, in the cluster? Because we we say that uh, we are working with IC sixteen one eight fifty, so we need at least to to provide the the, the platform with some tools that will help uh, integration. So on top of this platform, we are developing uh, tools that are based on the uh, IC 61850 stack and Python to be able to test uh, different things like, um, is my uh, application that is hosted in a virtual machine able to communicate with the, the system? And also uh, these testing tools should be able to simulate other application uh, input and, and output to be able to, to, run, uh, to run some tests. Thank you for your attention. And uh, Yuchen, want to add something? Yes, thank you for attention. Um, we um, have uh, written here the uh, GitHub URL, uh, URL of the CPAS project. Um, we are in process of uh, transferring some code uh, uh, to, this, uh, to this project as the launch is, is very recent. So if you are interested to learn more, please uh, look at, at this URL and, and, and uh, keep yourself posted of the, the um, uh, code that will be uh, posted there uh, very soon. Thank you.